Season 4 is upon us, and we've got a host of major changes coming to Apex Legends to shake up the metagame. Today we'll be taking our first look at the brand new legend Revenant, and in the coming days and weeks, you'll be seeing much more in-depth guides and discussions on the other Season 4 content as well. Thank you to EA Game Changers for sponsoring this video. Let's get started. In terms of design, visuals, and sound, Revenant is already by far my favorite legend. In terms of gameplay, he follows the typical formula of a passive, tactical, and ultimate ability. Your passive ability, Stalker, allows you to crouch walk faster and climb walls higher. A full guide on the specifics of this passive will come out in the coming weeks as I have time to test it out, but here's the first impressions. Crouch walking is almost completely silent to others around you. Using it to maneuver around an enemy team has, in my limited playtime, already proven to be very useful. Silent escapes, or silent pushes at an unsuspecting team just trying to get picks or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, have the potential to be a very powerful and defining trait of this legend. Your additional climbing distance is also of course relevant, as once again you'll have the avenues of both attack and escape open to you that are not necessarily open to other legends at all times. For example, while Pathfinder can get wherever he wants with his grapple, he's got a cooldown on that ability. It's also quite loud, and has an obvious visual cue, giving opponents a significant amount of time to react to it. Climbing walls, on the other hand, is not particularly loud, especially in the middle of two or more teams in a full-on fight around a multi-story building typical for World's Edge. There's also no cooldown for your climb, so it's a tool that's always available to you and helps give you a reliable verticality that most other legends do not have. Revenant's tactical ability is Silence. If you've ever played a MOBA or an RPG before, you've probably got a good idea of what this ability does. Upon activation, you fire a projectile from your hand similarly to how Bangalore shoots a smoke grenade. Upon impact with a surface, a small singularity will burst forth dealing 10 points of damage to enemies in range, and disabling all of their abilities for a few seconds. This singularity will remain for a few moments, and any enemy that enters its radius after the initial impact will still receive the same effects. Just like Bangalore Smoke, this ability can be activated and used while performing other actions. Shooting, reloading, healing, whatever. Just be aware that your range isn't nearly as far as Bangalore's with this ability, but it's still pretty respectably far. One point of clarification though, this is not a damage over time effect. Enemies cannot be subjected to the damage of this ability more than once. Either they take 10 damage and become silenced, or they take nothing and they're not silenced because they never got close enough to the singularity. By contrast, we have the most contentious and difficult to use part of Revenant's kit. His ultimate ability, Death Totem. Upon activation, Revenant summons a totem directly in front of him. You and your allies can approach this totem and use your interact button to gain a special buff called Death Protection. This buff does what it says. If you die while under the effects of this buff, you are protected from death and you will be instead teleported back to the totem with 1 HP. In theory, this seems really cool. You and your teammates can become invincible effectively, go steamroll an enemy team, and then teleport back to safety once you actually die. In practice, though, things are not quite this easy. First things first, while affected by this buff, only your health points are used in calculating how much damage you can take. Whatever armor you have equipped, if any, is completely ignored. So you can only blindly run at an enemy team with 100 HP instead of your typical 150 to 200. The intention of this ability, as I am inferring it by the developers and their voice lines put in the game, etc., seems to differ from its actual function in practice. These two ideas seem to be completely at odds. Consider this situation, and of course this is one that I cannot possibly actually test and show in video because it would require like six players on a private server, which I just simply cannot do. Let's say your team is Pathfinder, Wraith, and Revenant. That seems like a pretty meta team of top tier legends next to Revenant, right? Those are the kinds of teammates that you're going to see in the majority of your highly ranked lobbies. Now let's say that you get a good armor crack on somebody from the opposing team, and you all decide that making a fast death ball push towards that person and finishing them is the best way for you all to win the fight. 
This is really standard and how a lot of games inevitably go. WM1 is always going to be a thing in Apex. In this situation, let's say everyone's got purple armor for easy math. That 600 HP of bodies running at an enemy team, R99s and peacekeepers blazing. 200 damage just to down and not to kill any member of the pushing team is potentially really hard for defenders to deal. That's more damage than most people are going to do in one magazine of their weapon, and it's just a really high stress situation for the defenders. Their ability to reliably deal 200 damage to not one, not two, but three people to de-push that team and not die to the death ball, that's, it's just more often than not not going to happen. There's safety in numbers and raw health pool for the attackers in this situation. Now, let's consider the exact same situation, but with the attacking team using a death totem. All three attacking players pick up their buff and start pushing the enemy team, but this time they've got 100 HP each. That's 300 HP for the whole attacking team. Two defenders versus three attackers can certainly dish out 300 damage quickly enough to end this push before it gets too effectively lethal for them. And the fight will at that point just end in the defender's favor because the attackers have all taken half their health and damage and they get teleported back out of range of the fight and they're just generally not happy anymore. By taking this ult, the attackers have literally just halved their HP for effectively no gain. They spend 99 health to give themselves a disadvantage in their fight. The ultimate was, quite literally, pointless. Had they not used the ult, they could have steamrolled the enemy team, killed them, and then armor swapped on their bodies to quickly heal right back to the same health amount they would have had from Death Totem anyways. 1 HP and 100 armor. What's the point of this ultimate then, if this is going to be true? In practice, I, I, at this point, I simply, personally, don't really see it. The intended use of this ability seems to be to death ball on an enemy team and everyone is, just holds forward and just shoots their guns wildly to get kills, and then if they don't, teleport back. That seems to be the intention, but in practice it just seems to be more of a debuff than it seems to be an actual boon. So this begs the question, what is the point of this ultimate then? To be honest, I don't know yet. I'm still trying to work that one out. So far, it's pretty dope as a gatekeeping tool. Totem at the edge of the ring, and then run out of zone and harass some enemies that are coming in from the outside. If you kill them, cool. You can stand in their boxes and loot freely because if you get shot or die to ring damage, you're still just going to teleport right back to your safe totem at 1 HP and you're fine and you keep everything you pulled out of their death box. If you don't kill them, you still manage to do at least a little bit of damage, either directly with bullets or indirectly by just forcing them to stand outside the ring for longer, so it's something, I guess. You can also use the ult as a budget wraith tactical or wraith ult, using it to once again run outside a ring, grab loot, or do some other kind of interacting task, and then have a safe teleport back to your totem. It's basically a janky teleport that guarantees you're going to survive in an otherwise idiotic endeavor. Regardless, the character's barely been out for less than 24 hours at the time of recording, and we'll have to wait and see what kind of strategies emerge as I and others continue playing with this legend. But for now, I think this is an alt you almost never actually use and just appreciate Revenant for his excellent passive and tactical abilities, along with his solid hitbox and maximally edgy voice lines. Whether or not this legend will see competitive play at the pro level remains to be seen. His silence ability being able to disable Pathfinder and disable Wraith from their escape abilities could potentially be very strong, but with a 25 second cooldown, small AoE, and generally straight line sort of um, shooting arc, I suppose, for this, for this ability, it may be difficult to safely hit enemies with this thing more often than not. The times where you're going to hit them are when you and your opponent are going to both be in a full committal, full send, 1v1 situation. And in that point where you're just trying to kill each other as fast as possible, does the silence really help? I, I don't really know yet. Again, Legend's been out for less than 24 hours as of the time of recording, so we'll have to wait and see. I don't know how this Legend is going to make it into the high-level gameplay, but it's certainly possible that some pro teams may experiment with Revenant, 
We'll see in the coming months whether or not this prediction remains to be true. Anyways, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you've learned something new, and I hope you've enjoyed the gameplay and discussion that we've had here today. If you want to see more videos like this, or even more further deep dive discussions into either this legend or some of the other update stuff from Season 4, as I have more time to play it and really learn it to the deepest core levels I can, make sure you subscribe, follow here on Twitter, Discord, wherever else is suitable for you to get updates on when the next videos come out, and to join the discussion with me. If you have any tips, tricks, suggestions, things that I might have missed, or ideas that you have that could help me improve my own Revenant play that I can then reteach to you all, leave them in the comments down below. I'm happy to read and help out. Once again, guys, thank you all for being here. Hope you learned something new. We'll see you again very soon. Take care.